okay uh, we are starting a very fascinating chapter from for the mathematics that is about the polar coordinates okay so in this chapter we'll be drawing some very very fascinating exciting uh, kind of graphs okay and before we go on to learn how to draw these polar graphs uh, we we should be very clear about sketching the graphs of sine and then cos okay and we should also be this should always be on our tips that if you have y is equal to sine x so you should be clear about these critical values of the sine x okay like sine 0 is 0 sine 90 is 1 sine 180 is uh, uh, 0 sine 270 is minus 1 and similarly for the cos you have uh, this 1 0 minus 1 and 0 okay now we have uh, started a discussion over here because since we have to be master of these this polar coordinates it all depends on these trigonometrical functions so uh, the question i ask my students is that if they are really clear that if uh, why do we have um, um, just one minute now we should be uh, the, the, the students should be very clear that why do we have all sine cos tan and they are positive here why do we have only the sine positive here why it is just a tan positive here and why it is the cos positive over here okay now to make it clear i'll have to uh, i have sh i'm showing you a circle over here a circle whose radius is r okay and this is your y axis and this is your x axis now um, when i when i say that the radius is r so that you should be very clear that the radius can never be negative wherever you are on the circumference of this circle okay um, these x and y coordinates can be positive or negative depending on uh, the position they are. Now, uh, this point A is taken as r comma zero, this point B is zero comma r, this point C is minus r comma zero, this D is zero comma minus r. I have taken a, a general point P on this circumference, which is x comma y. And it is it can take any position on this um, on the circumference of the circle, okay? If point P goes in the anti-clockwise direction from this um, uh, original x-axis, then we say that the angle is going to be positive, okay? Um, and when it goes uh, in the um, clockwise direction, so you know that, um, what is the, how do you measure the angle if it goes in the clockwise direction? Hmm? Yes, Vacho? If you go in a clockwise direction, like if you go in this direction, sorry, if you're going in this direction, do you remember in your additional mathematics, you know that if you go the, in this uh, anti-clockwise direction. So this is going to be zero, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and this one is 360, okay? And if, yeah, if, you're going the, if you're going in the clockwise direction, okay? So this is going to be zero, minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, and so on. So, uh, can someone tell me that what do we call this this angle when when we are just taking this from original x axis from here and going all the way determining the angles from this first quadrant's x axis like alpha so, uh, alpha I just want to uh, hear two of the words one was the general angle okay and the second was the basic angle. So which angle is this? Like if I, we, we are going to determine this from the original x-axis, is it the general angle or the basic angle? Hmm? Yes? Uh, which one? Like if you're going to determine the angle from the original x-axis, so is it a general angle or a basic angle? What do we call it? Basic. No, it's this is called the general basic. This is called general angle, okay? The basic angle is 
actually like uh, let's say you're in this quadrant okay and this angle over here is 30 degrees so that is the basic angle over here but its general angle would be 210 degrees or it can be minus 150 degrees okay now suppose you are here in this quadrant and this angle is 20 degrees so this is the basic angle over here this 20 degrees uh, while the general angle is going to be 340 degrees. So the general angle is determined from the first quadrant's um, x-axis. If you go anti-clockwise, that will be positive. If you go clockwise, this will be measured as negative. Okay? So, uh, now, um, I, I'm just making you recall what are the general and the basic. There are basic angles alpha. Yeah, yeah, that is alpha and the general angle is known as theta, okay? Acha, now, uh, coming back to this, um, like, uh, this circle thing is basically, this is the basis of all the trigonometry that you guys learn, okay? Now, uh, so when it has started rotating from this point, this OA, and that's, let's say this has rotated up to an angle theta over here, okay? So I can, let me call this point uh, Q over here. So we know that this OP is the radius, this length O, uh, Q, P, Q is Y, and this length is going to be X, okay? Now, uh, can I say that sine theta, is equal to y over r, yes? And cos theta is x over r, and tan theta is y over x. Tan theta is y over x. Okay, now this is really very, very interesting. If you people are really uh, uh, born mathematicians, then you will really love this, and this will fascinate you and you will see that how do you have sine 30 equal to half cos, like you, you have different values of sine, cos, and tan, okay? So I'm going to tell you the reason for that. Okay, now, guys, uh, this is going to be the, the most important information over here, okay? Have you ever wondered that why sine zero is zero? Why cos zero is one? Why tan zero is zero? Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that why this, why does this happen? Mm -hmm. Look at this point A. This point P is moving on the circumference and it, the more it goes away from this OA, the angle increases anti-clockwise, okay? Now suppose that, I'm just going to draw it here. Uh, let's say this is your A over here, this is your O, and this P is overlapping, OP is overlapping OA. What would be the angle then? What is the angle theta then? If OP and... Zero. Yeah, that's great. The angle theta is going to be zero. Okay, now look at this. If you... Like, you know, at this point A, your theta is zero, your X is equal to R, and your Y is equal to zero. If you put these values one by one into these three equations, you would be really glad to see that, like, you know, Y sine zero is zero, Y cos zero is one, and Y tan zero is zero. You got it, girls? Hmm? Look at this, if I put theta as zero and y as zero, so this would give me sine zero is equal to zero over r, so that is zero. If I put in this cos theta is zero, okay, and x is r over r, so you get one. And similarly, your tan zero is going to be um, zero over r, so that is equal to zero. So that is why you people get these values from your calculator, okay? Then, 
Now you can yourself determine that when this P moves all the way to the position B over here, okay? So how much, like one, now this OP is overlapping this OB. How much is this angle now? Hmm? 90. 90 degrees, okay? Now when your theta is 90, you have your X equal to zero and now your Y is equal to R. So if you put all these values into these equations over here, you will again be fascinated to see that how this um, sine 90 is going to be equal to one because that will be R over R. How this cos 90 is going to be zero and how this tan 90 is going to be infinity. Similarly, you can also determine the values of sine 180, cos 180, tan 180, and for the 270 degrees, and even for the 360 degrees, you can determine these values. Okay, guys, are you with me? Hmm? Are you understanding what is happening here? Yes? Acha. Ab. I'm just going to uh, like, you know, summarize this. I'm not going in to go into the details as we are supposed to go when teaching the additional math students, okay? So believing that you people are understanding this. Now, can, can, can we say that sine theta basically depends on y? Sine theta is dependent, dependent on y. Now, when the y coordinate is zero, your sine is zero. When your y coordinate is maximum r, then your sign is going to be one, okay? So uh, if you see that, um, like um, over here, uh, and I have this, okay, uh, you will see that um, now this sign, you must be, clear that why you have sine zero here, one here, zero here, and minus one here. Since your sine is dependent on the y coordinates, so on the y coordinates, your sine will be zero. Here, your y coordinate is exactly equal to the r. That is why this is one. And here it is the least. So it is minus one. So uh, this is again one of the reasons that we have the sine theta between minus one and one. Okay, now for the cos theta, you will have this um, for the cos theta. If you're noting it down, then you will be understanding this better. Now for this cos theta, we have zeros here. Why? Because cos is all dependent on x. It is all dependent on x. So where your x coordinate zero is zero, cos is zero there. And where your x coordinate is maximum r, it is one, it is least over here. And again, you see that your cos theta is also between minus one and one. And for the tan theta, for the tan theta over here, you see that tan is going to be, because tan depends on both y and x. So since here your y is zero, so tan is zero here. And here it is going to be infinity, it is going to be infinity. And this is going to be one here and one here and minus one here and minus one here. Because when you have 45 degrees, both x and the y coordinates are same. So that is why tan 45 is one. You can check this from your uh, calculators, okay? Now, I have to tell you now, finally, that why do we say that all the sine cos tan are positive here? Why just sine is positive here? Why it is just the tan positive here? And why it is the cos positive over here? If you look at this, this sign being dependent on y, can I say sine will be positive in these two quadrants and it will be negative in these two quadrants? Yes, but so please tell me, you must agree or disagree with this. Yes, because the yes. values of y, they are positive yeah, negative. Because, yeah, in these two quadrants, your y-axis is positive. So if you go from zero to 180, your sine is positive and from 180 to 360, your um, sine is negative. 
if I just add this onto through this um, graph over here, you see the sine graph is like this. So this is your zero to 180. This is above the x-axis, okay? And from 180 to 360, do you remember this? The graph of sine, yes? Anna? So this is how you have y equal to sine x, okay? And then if you uh, go back and look at this cos over here, cos depends on x. So where you have the negative x-axis, there you will have the negative values for the cos. So cos is negative in these two quadrants and it is positive in these two quadrants, okay? So you see that from 90 to 270, cos is negative, okay? And otherwise, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, Vita, I'm coming on to the tan, just wait. Okay, so now this, um, uh, if I take you to the next here, now look at this, uh, how we have this um, y is equal to cos x here, okay? So it is going to be like uh, 90, 180, 270, and this is 360. So the graph of cos starts from one, okay? This is like this, and then this is over here, goes like this and this. So this is, you see, uh, from zero to 90, it is positive, And then from 270 to 360, it is positive. And from 90 to 270, you can see that, like this cos is basically like this. It depends on the x coordinates, okay? So this is one here, zero here, minus one here, zero here. And the sign depends on the values of y. So that is why it was like this, zero, zero, one and minus one. Okay, you can relate it now. This is from this is from zero to 90. So this is positive over here. And then from 270 to 360, this is again positive here, okay, above the x-axis. Now, going back to the tan thing. Now, tan depends on both the y and x, both the y and x, okay? So uh, it, it will be, positive here in this quadrant because both of them are positive. It will be positive here because both are negative. Negative over negative gives us a positive value. And in these two quadrants, your tan is going to be negative. And you were asking me that what is the range for the tan theta? So you see that tan theta goes up to the infinity. So this goes from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, so this down here, negative infinity, this is positive infinity over here. So if I can show you the graph for the tan, so the tan's graph is like this. If you remember for the tan's graph, we have the 45 degrees intervals, okay? And this is your 270 and this is your 360. You have the asymptote at 90 and then you have the asymptote at 90. 270, okay? Your tan is like this, like this is zero, infinity, zero, minus infinity. And it is one here, here, and it is going to be minus one and minus one. So that is how you have the graph for the tan. It goes like this to the infinity, this to the infinity, and then backwards to the infinity. So this is the graph for your tan x. This is your y equal to tan x, okay? Oh, so this is really like, you know, I have to speak a lot here. So I have given you the basis, the reasons that why we have all of them positive here, why it is just the sign positive and so on. So are you clear that why this is add sugar to coffee thing happens? Hmm? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so I'll be uh, ending this video here and. Um,